everyone welcome back to my channel we have a video tutorial today and I haven't done this um, in quite a while because I didn't really have time I've been so focused on my um, series of learn to knit and I wanted to you know be consistent with that and bring a video pretty much every week and it took a bit of time because you have to prepare for it and knit a swatch and then teach it and then edit it and upload it and all that but I wanted to bring you a um, a sock pattern. It's not actually a pattern. I didn't write a pattern for it. This is going to be just a video tutorial. I do not have written instructions for it. I am playing with the idea of making a more complicated version as a pattern, but I want to teach you the basics and uh, see how it goes. As, as you can see, it's a simple ankle shorty is not even a sh it's not a shorty because it's shorter than shorty it's more um, like a tiny slipper it's knitted in the round in one piece well i'll show you in a minute um, it features decreases for the toe and the heel kitchener stitch at the toe and kitchener stitch at the heel so the the toe and the heel are worked exactly the same in the round. Then also I've done an eye cord uh, bind off around the ankle to make it a bit more cozy. And again, it will look so much cooler, but I didn't want to complicate things. If you do the eye cord bind off in a different color, I think it will be a lot cooler. Or maybe the heel and the toe in a different color. You could also do some cables on the top of the foot or some color work anything you can think of so if you want to be creative then take this uh, video tutorial and then put your print on it and see what you can come up with this is knitted in worsted weight yarn and I have here just my leftovers of different kind of yarns I don't even remember what yarns these are but they're super super soft I will look them up and I'll put them in the description down below so you know exactly what yarn I'm using. This one is a Cheviot um, that I dyed with avocado and it's quite rustic so it's a little bit scratchy. Obviously if you want to wear these socks on bare feet then maybe this will be a bit scratchy, I don't know, depends on how sensitive your skin is. But this is the softest one I could think of and you can wear them without any socks underneath. You also need a, so you need your wool, you need crochet, um, a crochet hook, you need circular needles or like I have here my um, Addy's Flexi Flips. You need scissors and a tapestry needle for the kitchener stitch and also you need a stitch holder for the top of the foot which I'll show you in a minute. So yeah, let's go ahead and get started. So we're going to start with the provisional cast on and you want to do that in a different color yarn than the one you're going to use for your for your project. So I'm going to use this pink avocado dyed cheviot and then I'm going to knit the foot in this very dark, dark, almost gray green. And the first thing that you want to do when you, when you cast on using a provisional cast on is to knit a knot, to knit, <laughs> to make a knot in your end so you can feel it there. And you know that is your slip that that's your slip dot end. And then you want to hold your yarn like this and twist it, reach through and pull on that end to make a loop. And then you're going to put your hook through it. So that's the beginning of it. Then you're going to take your circular needle and we're going to start to do provisional cast on straight on the needle. I don't remember if I taught this on, on my channel before but it's simple so I'm going to show you. 
So what you want to do is hold your end under your needle and place it on top of your yarn and then this is your hook with your slip knot on it. You want to reach over the needle and grab your yarn and pull through. So that's one stitch. Then you're going to move your yarn in between at the back of your needle and you're going to reach and pull through. Put the yarn back, reach and pull through. Pull the yarn back, reach and pull through. Yarn back, reach and pull through. So you're kind of making a crochet chain on your circular needle. That way you don't have to pick the stitches from the back of your crochet chain. And for a woman's size, or like a teenager, for a worsted weight, I suggest you cast on 40 stitches. If you would like to knit it for a child, maybe go to 34 stitches, 32 stitches depending on your gauge. If you want to knit for a man, then you want to add more stitches. So I'm just going to cast on all my stitches here. So you want to count your stitches and when you have 40 stitches, you want to continue doing maybe about three more crochet chains and then you want to cut your yarn and pull it through. And now we have our 40 stitches here. It looks mahusive, <laughs> but don't worry. Um, it's because of the crochet chain that the stitches are quite far apart. It will tighten as you work through it. Now we're going to start knitting the part of of the foot and you want to grab your yarn if I can find the end for it here we go and you want to start knitting on the side that has these uh, diagonal little lines that's your right side on the wrong side you have little purr bumps so you don't want that and it looks like you're going to knit in the flat but don't worry we're going to join in the round on our second round okay so you want to hold your working yarn here and you want to start knitting and you knit across all these stitches just go through the front grab your yarn and pull through just simple knitting and like I said if you want to be creative then you can incorporate different kinds of stitches or stitch combination. And if you're looking for a stitch combination, then you can visit my Learn to Knit Continental. I've done a lot of different stitch combination of knits and pearls there that you could use. Actually, the, the mosaic, the fake mosaic stitch, no, the fake cable, which is called the mosaic stitch, would be perfect for the top of the foot of these socks because it's worked on a on 20 stitch repeat so it would be perfect for this area here why didn't I try that I don't know maybe I should try that Okay, so we've done all our 40 stitches and now we're going to start knitting in the round. So be careful not to twist your stitches. We're going to place it on, um, in front of us like this with the pearl bumps facing upwards. And then where, where you think you're about halfway, you're just going to pull your cable like this I'm going to work magic loop okay and then I'm going to pre put my 
needle through and then I'm going to make those two um, pearl bump wrong sides facing each other like that and my yarn is coming from my back needle I'm going to pull my back needle a little bit and then I start knitting with my on my front needle and that is joining in the round and there will be a little gap to start with there but just remember every time you start a new round you just want to pull on that first stitch to kind of closing that gap and you also want to pull on the yarn that you just attached and we're just going to knit Then when you finish the stitches on one needle, careful not to twist them, you go for the second needle. This is just basic magic loop knitting. When you do magic loop, your, when you start a new needle, your yarn is always coming from the back needle. So just quick knitting this is you're kind of actually knitting a tube now to start with there we go back to our beginning of the round you do not need to put any uh, stitch markers here because you kind of see your ends and you know that's the beginning of your round back to the beginning of your round be careful not to twist your work pull your back needle yarn is coming from the back we're gonna knit the first stitch and then you're just gonna pull on it to close that gap and the second one maybe and then pull on that yarn it keeps getting loose don't worry once you go ahead with it it's going to be a lot easier when you have some work done so yeah you continue knitting this way in the round until your work um, measures about 10 centimeters for a size small or size 37 or size 4 UK I'm going to put this to the side and show you my sample here so this fits me and you want to measure from the provisional cast on which would be here to where you would start the decreases and you want this to be 10 centimeters if, if you're if you're size 4 and then if you're a size 5 you go 11 centimeters 12 centimeters 13 centimeters and so on and now we're going to start the decreases for the toe which are very very simple and on this <laughs> on this sock I'm using my Flexi flips. These are Addy Flexi Flips size 4. I forgot to mention that. I'm so sorry. So the yarn is worsted weight and the needles are size 4. I, when I edit this video, I will put it down here somewhere so you can see it at the beginning. <laughs> but these, I love them so much. I have the smaller, the smaller size, which are 2.5, I think. But they're short. They're shorter than these and I don't have anything to grip on but these are longer and I'm so happy that Addy, Addy made them they emailed me when um, when they were releasing them so I went straight into Amazon and purchased my pair but um, there are three needles that you could use as a uh, magic loop or as DPNs but because they have this little flexible cable in between they're a lot easier to work just on two needles and you knit with the third one 
So this is how we're going to do the decreases. I just put up a video on Learn to Knit Continental which features decreases and increases and here are the decreases that we use in that video which is SSK and knit two together. So I'm going to knit one, then I'm going to do an SSK, slip one, slip another one, go with my left needle through both stitches and knit them through the back loop. That is a left leaning decrease. Then I'm going to knit to three stitches left. Oh, these needles, I forgot they make noise. Okay, I have three stitches left here. I'm going to go in my second stitch and through that second stitch coming through this first stitch as well, I'm going to knit them together. And that is knit two together, a right leaning decrease. And then knit one. I'm going to do the same to the other side, which will be the sole of the foot. knit one, slip one, slip another one, knit through the back loops, knit them together, then I'm going to knit to three stitches left, oh. and I'm going to knit these two stitches together going through the second one and coming through the first one to knit them together and then knit one and because we knit one and then we do the decreases it gives us this little decorative um, toe for our foot and the same for the heel of the sock so you do that on one row and then on the next row you just knit all stitches and then do another decrease row and then another simple knit stitch row until you end up with 10 stitches on the front needle and 10 stitches on the back needle. Obviously if you did the 40 stitches cast on, if you've done a cast on of more stitches then just leave 12 stitches at the top. Just make the toe as tapered as you like, I suggest. But for this size, I'm going to keep decreasing every other round until I have 10 stitches left on the front needle and 10 stitches left on the back needle. And I will continue doing that until um, I get to my 10 stitches or 20 stitches in total and I will show you how we're going to close in the toe then. Once you finish the decreases for the toe, you are ready to do the kitchener stitch. This is how the toe will be looking like. The work kind of tapers that way and you have let stitches. For a 40 cast on, a women's standard size, you end up with 10 stitches here. If you need a men's size, which you probably have about 56 stitches or I don't know, 48 stitches depending on the size then maybe you do um, decreases until you have 14 stitches instead of 10 here but um, let me show you how to work the kitchener stitch 
So Kitchener stitch is used mainly for the grafting of the toe of socks or maybe uh, the top of the shoulders on a sweater. But this is how I'm going to show. I'm going to show you here on my socks. You're going to leave a little bit of a tail, cut your yarn, and then using a tapestry needle, you thread it through like that. Then you're going to align your needles together and bring the stitches towards the tip of your needles. And the yarn is coming from the back. You're going to go in the front of the first stitch and slip it off. Then you're going to go in the second stitch as if to purl and you're going to pull your yarn through. Then you're going to go in the back needle as if to purl, slip it off, then in the second stitch as if to knit and pull your yarn through. And then pull on the yarn a little bit, not too much, you don't want it too tight. And you continue that. So as if to knit, slip, as if to purl, pull your yarn through, back needle as if to purl, slip, as if to knit, Pull the yarn through and tighten the yarn, not too much, just a tad. Again, as if to knit, slip, as if to purl, pull the yarn through, go to the back needle, as if to purl, slip, as if to knit, pull the yarn through. And you can just tighten as much as you think, not too much, because you want your stitches to look like they're just going, um, going around like that. So again, as if to knit, slip, as if to purl, pull the yarn through. It's hard to do it, look in the viewfinder. As if to purl, slip as if to knit, oops, as if to knit, pull the yarn through. Front, as if to knit, slip, as if to purl, pull the yarn through, as if to purl, slip, as if to knit, pull the yarn through. And as you can see, you can still tighten it even if you're further up. But when you feel it, you don't want to feel um, rich there, a ridge underneath. You just want to feel it smooth. As if to knit, slip, as if to pull, pull the yarn through, back, as if to pull, slip as if to knit, pull the yarn through. We just have a few left now. I want to finish this to show you how to actually finish the Kitchener stitch. Slip as if to purl, purl, slip, knit, almost there, you'll be left with two stitches on one stitch on each needle and what you want to do when you're at this point, you want to just, as if to knit, slip, drop the needle, as if to purl, slip, drop the needle, and you'll end up with these two, a, big, a bit bigger loops here. And you just want to go in and pull your needle through quite tightly and that will close that edge there 
And look, I didn't pull very much on that one. Can you see? It's not good. But it's still quite a good toe. And that is how to do the Kitchener stitch on the toe of the sock. And that stitch there is going to annoy me now. If you're working with wool, it will even out in the wash, don't worry. But as you can see, your stitches look like they just continue. There's no seam there, no ridge at all. That's the Kitchener stitch. So now we've finished the Kitchener stitch and we have something that looks like this. And now we're, we're going to pick up the stitches from the provisional cast on, but we're only going to pick up um, half of the stitches to work with. And then we're going to do another provisional cast on. I'll show you in a minute. So we're going to pick up all the stitches around, but half of them, the top ones here, they'll go on a holder. And then we're going to do another provisional cast on to start here and continue working our heel. It's not that hard, trust me. Uh, you just need to have a little bit of patience with all the fiddlings, but it's fine. Now you wanna go and feel the ends of the pink yarn and you wanna start at the end that doesn't have a slip knot. That's why we put the slip knot here because this is where we're gonna unravel it. And you want to have your needles at hand because we're going to put our stitches on the needle. Yep. And you just want to start unraveling this chain. And your first stitch is going to have the pink yarn going through it. Can you see? That's our first stitch. You want to put your needle through to save it. Then we're going to pull our pink yarn out one way and the other. That's our first stitch. And then what I like to do is keep a little bit of tension on my pink yarn here and you will see your stitch. This is my, you can unravel it if you want like that and then your stitch will be revealed here but if you're worried you're going to drop it just go in and pick it up like that and then pull on your pink yarn sometimes your pink yarn oops gets stuck in it don't worry that's why you need to have a contrasting color yarn for the provisional cast on so you pick that one and you have to pick 20 stitches I got five, six, seven, eight, nine, oops, ten, eleven. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, Oops, 20. So I've got my 20 stitches that I'm going to work on here and I'm going to grab my stitch holder and I'm going to put the rest 20 stitches on a stitch holder. So it'll be easier because the stitch holder is sharper. Come on, there we go. You have to have 20 stitches for the stitch holder as well. If you did a cast on a 40. There we 
go. My finger is starting to turn blue. We're nearly at the end. Here's my last one. There we go. Then you want to pull the yarn out and close your stitch holder. So now we have 20 stitches here, 20 stitches on a stitch holder. And when we join in our yarn, we want to do another provisional cast on of 20 stitches up here. And I'm just going to use the same yarn that I had so I don't, um, I don't use too much. I've got my knot here and now I'm going to do a slip knot there. I wanted to show you how to do a pick up stitches from the spine of the chain. Let's just chain about 24. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. I'm going to cut the yarn. I don't want it too long. Okay. And then this is another way of making, doing provisional cast on. You want to lay your chain on the on in front of you with this knot on your right and then as you can see the front of the chain has a series of V's if you flip it to the back it's got some like little knots and you want to go in those knots to pick up your um, stitches so we need to pick up 20 stitches with our main yarn so I'm going to go in the first knot here or the second doesn't matter and I'm going to pick up one then in the next one pick up another one two three four five six if you flip your work you will see the column of V's on the on the other side that means that you're picking in the wrong in the right place six I've done six seven eight nine ten eleven Twenty. There we go. So I have my 20 stitches and I want to align them here with my work and I'm going to attach it to my sock. So I'm going to put my new stitches on the back needle and then with my third needle or if you use circular you just pull on this needle out. I want to start knitting in the round and it will all get connected, don't worry. Okay. I'm going to start knitting, oops, my stitches to join the two parts together. You 
it's quite fiddly at this point. You kind of have a lot of um, different ends, but just power through, it will make a beautiful little slipper. You could make these in a feltable yarn, a bit bigger with chunky, bulky yarn and then felt them and they will be beautiful. Okay, now I'm ready to knit my new stitches. Careful not to twist, you want to have your uh, diagonal lines from the provisional cast on facing you and the bumps facing the bumps, the inside of the sock. You just want to start knitting from that needle, tightening your stitches together. And I suggest you knitting the round now for about an inch before you start the decreases exactly like we did for the toe. I'll show you. Okay. So now our two sides are joined. As you can see, they're joined together here at the top. We're going to pick up these stitches to do the bind off, the I core bind off, but so far, so far, so good. <laughs> We're going to continue knitting the heel. So work about an inch of just plain tube spiral stockinette knitting and then start the decreases for the toes and do them exactly as you did for uh, the decreases for the heel and do them exactly as you did the decreases for the toe so the same amount if you knitted the size small with 40 stitches then decrease until you have 10 stitches left on each needle want to show you one more trick too many <laughs> yarns around here but you want to look at the the yarn that you just attached and the yarn that you have here from the um, when you attach the provisional, provisional cast on and you can tie them together to close in that gap even better And you use these two ends when you weave them in to close any little uh, gaps here to graft it. So I worked a few rounds here and now you can start the decreases for the heel which I'm not going to show you because they're exactly the same as the toe and you finish with the Kitchener stitch grafting at the, at the heel as exactly the same as the toe. I want to move on and show you how to pick up these stitches here and do the um, eye cord bind off. So I'm going to leave those stitches there and finish them after I finish the video but if you're knitting this then do the decreases for the heel the same as the decreases for the toe and finish with the Kitchener stitch and then come back to the I cord that we're going to do here. So the first thing we want to do is unravel or pick up the stitches from the provisional cast on and we start at the um, non knotted hair, uh, uh, end so this one that doesn't have a knot in it and we're just going to do the same way as we did for 
earlier, the first stitch has the yarn running through it and then I'm going to pull it out like that. Keep a bit of tension and go to my next stitch to pick it is this one. Go to the next one. Next one. I'm picking up the right leg of the V on the right side here. Earlier we picked up the stitches on the wrong side from the provisional cast on. I just realized that these needles here are gonna give me a bit of a trouble when I start knitting because they're so stiff. Okay, so you make sure that you pick up your 20 stitches or however many you, you put on the provisional cast on. That's the last one. I'm going to pull my yarn through. And I have all my stitches on this needle here. And then I'm going to put these stitches on another needle, the ones that are on the stitch holder. These are a lot easier to put on, I think. And once you've got your live stitches back you just start knitting in the round for like four four rounds I think four or five rounds and then we do the eye core bind off if you have such a thin stitch holder like me your stitches will feel quite tight but they will relax once you start knitting. All right, now I have to take another ball of yarn because that one is attached to my heel. <laughs> but I have lots of ends, lots of different ones. And I'm gonna start knitting in the round now for, like I said, four or five rounds, just to give it a little bit of a height, not too much of a height here. So just knit around these stitches. I just realized that I twisted my stitches as I took them off the holder, so I have to knit through the back loop. Never mind. Okay, now when you knit it, you won't have these. I'm sorry I have to have them so I can finish this tutorial. It's taking forever. Now we're gonna pull on that first stitch to close any gap between the provisional cast on and the stitch holder. And I'm just going to knit around few more times and then we'll do the eye core bind off. I'll skip to that. All right so this is what we're working with like I said before ignore that that should be a finished heel but this is where we're at now, here. We're gonna do the I-core bind off on these stitches to form this. 
it's the place where we're going to put our foot through like that and in order to do that you align your needles as if you would start to knit and then on this needle you're just going to cast on three stitches and this is how we're going to do it I'm going to put my thumb underneath the yarn and then I'm going to put a stitch on it. That's one, two, three. So I've just put a little three stitches on the beginning here. And I take my working needle and I'm going to knit two of them. So knit one. Need a second one. Then I'm going to slip the third one, knit one, and then pass the one that I just slipped over the one I just knitted. And now I have three stitches here. I'm going to move them to my left needle again and start over. Knit one. Need another one, slip one, knit one, and pass the slip stitch over the knitted one. And then I'm going to move my stitches back on my left needle and start again. Knit one, knit another one, slip one, knit one pass the slip stitch over and slip all three stitches on my left needle again. As you can see our, our um, eye cord is already starting to form. I'll do, do a few more. Knit one, knit another one, slip, knit one, pass the slip stitch over the knitted one and put them on my left needle. Knit one, knit a second one, slip one, knit one, pass the slip stitch over and move the stitches on my left needle. Can you see? The eye cord is already starting to form. So I'm going to do all that and I'll show you how we're going to finish it. cord bind off and I just want to connect it here and I want to show you how to do that this is what it looks like I'm going to cut my yarn just make sure I cut the right yarn okay just cut the yarn give a little bit of a tail just in case you need to do some grafting thread your tapestry needle and this is where I started my uh, eye cord bind off. I'm going to go in my first stitch. Then I'm going to look at my first column of V's here and I'm going to put my needle through both legs. I'm going to pull it through like that. I'm going to drop this stitch and I'm going to come through it one more time. I'm going to go in the second stitch like this. I'm going to go in the second column of V's. This one. It, you don't have to be that specific with it. And then I'm going to drop 
my stitch and come through the top of it again then through my last stitch drop it and go through the other V's and come through the top of it again and it kind of kind of connects it a little bit it's not perfect but at least you don't see you don't see a big gap there and this is what I was talking about when you need uh, to graft or to like finish up your project you see here there will be a lot of a lot of these but if you have tails to weave in you just pull on them like that and then you just go in and out and close oops close those gaps when you weave in the ends you have I have a lot of ends here <laughs> you might want to start slow with one end and then finish with the rest but just by the help of a few uh, ins and out through the stitches you kind of close this place here and it's not like this can you see here you've got so if you have an end there just weave it in and close that gap and that is it weave in the ends and you, your um, sock will be ready obviously finished with the heel mine isn't but it's lunchtime now, so I'm going to leave this here and finish it after. But I hope this video was helpful. Please let me know if you give it a try. Tag me on Instagram with hashtag Uh Obviously, share pictures there as well, tagging me in them. Um, yeah, comment down below what you think. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in my next video. Bye.